In this video, I want to look at solving equations using the square root property and the zero product property. So let's start with the square root property. The square root property says if u squared is equal to d, then u is equal to plus or minus the square root of d. As a simple example, if we know x squared is equal to 9, then we know that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so that tells me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3, which makes sense. 3 squared is equal to 9, but negative 3 times negative 3 is also equal to 9. So let's see this being used to solve more complicated quadratic equations. Here I have x squared minus 4. To use the square root property, I need something squared equal to a number. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get x squared is equal to 4. Then I can use my square root property, which says I can take the square root, but I have to take plus or minus the square root. The square root of 4 is 2, so x is equal to plus 2 or minus 2. And we can check. 2 squared minus 4 is 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0. Negative 2 squared minus 4, well negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, minus 4 is equal to 0. So both of these do work. I can also use it to solve things like x plus 7 squared is equal to 9. Here I do have something squared equal to a number. So I could take the square root and get x plus 7 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. We know that the square root of 9 is 3. And then if I subtract 7 from both sides, what I get is negative 7 plus or minus 3. So this is really two numbers. Negative 7 plus 3, which is negative 4. And negative 7 minus 3 which is negative 10. And both of these are valid answers in this particular problem. What about x squared plus 3x plus 4 equal to 0? This one I could not use the square root property on. If I tried to get everything on one side except the x squared, so I have something squared, I would have x squared equal to minus 3x minus 4. Taking the square root would give me negative 3x, the square root plus or minus the square root of negative 3x minus 4, which doesn't help me since my solution still has an x in it. So we're going to need other methods to solve these. So in order to solve these types of equations, we're going to use what's known as the zero product property. The zero product property says that if a times b is equal to zero, then either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. The idea being if I multiply two numbers and get 0, then one of them had to be 0, because that's the only way to multiply and get 0. So what we're going to do is we'll get everything on one side, and then factor, and then we have a product equal to 0. So let's look at some examples. Let's start with x squared plus 3x plus 2 equal to 0. I need to factor, so I need two numbers that multiply to be 2 and add to be 3. And we can get that with 2 and 1. So the zero product property says one of these has to be equal to 0. I'm multiplying two things and get 0 as a solution. So one of them has to be 0. For x plus 2 equal to 0, we would get x equal to negative 2. And for x plus 1 equal to 0, we get x equal to negative 1. And you can plug both of these numbers into the original equation and show that they do in fact both give you a solution of 0. For another one, x squared plus 5x equal to 14. In order for the zero, property to, zero product property to work, we have to have something equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides to get x squared plus 5x minus 14 equal to 0. I now need two numbers that multiply to be negative 14 and add to be 5. 
And I can get that with 7 and negative 2. So now I'm multiplying two things. I'm multiplying x plus 7 times x minus 2 and getting 0. So one of them had to be 0. The first equation gives me x must be equal to negative 7. The second one, x equal to 2. So we must either have x equal to negative 7 or x equal to 2. What about x squared plus 4x plus 7 equal to 0? The first step would be to factor. We need two numbers that multiply to be 7 and add to be 4. But that's impossible. The only numbers that multiply to be 7 would be 7 and 1, which does not add to be 4. So we do need other ways to solve these as well. And in the next video, I'm going to look at the quadratic formula, which will show me how to solve not only this, but any general quadratic equation.